Hey friends, I'm trying out something new. I just want to talk about my article so that you don't have to read it or get an, a quick overview. Uh, it's about color bending and texture compression, which is why sometimes they look really similar. And because of some half knowledge uh, in my early days, I didn't investigate it much. So um, I want to talk and write about it so that maybe it helps you to don't make the same mistake. If we look at the top, we see two dudes talking about the new cool 64-bit uh, processor. And it's awesome because it's 64-bit. And uh, the other guy says, wow, that's so cool, it's killer. And both have no idea what this actually means. But it's like, you know that it's better. And this is, this is enough. You don't need no more. It was the same for me when it came to color depth. Because 24-bit per, per pixel is, is really fine, it's awesome. You get out 16.7 million colors out of it. And if you, if you read Wikipedia or other sources, you will uh, find different numbers. But some of them are like, okay, the human eye can only distinguish 10 million colors. So with more than 60 million colors, you should be on the safe side. And this was everything I knew. <laughs> and that's why I said things like, 24 bits, man, it's totally enough. You can't see more colors anyway. So who needs more? I had really no idea what color channels are, what an alpha channel would be. And I didn't investigate it because, you know, half knowledge. But sometimes you see in games something like this, artifacts like color banding. And it was really hard for me to understand and explain this because it's impossible. In my world, it was impossible because you can't, see more than 10 million colors, right? That is what Wikipedia says. So I was struggling. What does this mean? And years later, I learned about color channels and that 24 bits only means that you have three color channels, red, green, and blue. And if it comes to the 32 bits, you have an alpha channel. And that uh, every channel has only eight bit of colors available, which means 256 colors per channel, okay? And this isn't that much anymore, especially if you imagine that your uh, HD monitor has uh, 1920 pixels width. And if you have a gradient from black to white, and remember you have only uh, 256 pixels available or colors available, and you stretch it to the whole monitor resolution, yeah, you get bands of color, yeah, color chunks of 8 pixels width. And most of the time you don't have a gradient yeah, reaching from black to white. You, you have maybe only 10, 20, 30 color variations in your, in your gradient. Maybe you want to have a dark gradient going from black to a dark gray or something like that. And then you have even less shades of gray available for such a big gradient. And this took a while to, to infiltrate my head, okay? I hope you can see these artifacts in my examples. If not, then you should check out the article. There you can see it very well, but it might be get confused with the YouTube compression. So um, when I learned that you have these limitations of colors and the 8-bit and blah, 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 then I said stuff like, okay, you know, when you see color bending in a game, you can't do anything. I mean, it's a hardware or a software limitation, whatever. I mean, your monitor might not be able to show more colors. The games internally, they, they work with fire precision to blend and stuff like that. But the end result is 24-bit. So when you see color banning, there's nothing you can do. And that's not true. Because there's one really efficient way to fight color banding. And it's called differing. Pixel artists will know it. They do this all the time. I just quote... A differ is an intentional applied form of noise to ease the transition between two colors without adding any new color to the palette. It works really well. Here's an example. It's awesome. <laughs> I think it's black magic. So that's what you can do about the real color banding. Okay, when it comes to the limitations of the uh, 256 colors, this is your way to go and it will look better than before. Okay, but there might be areas where you see some artifacts of colors and with bending and it looks, looks, doesn't look so clean. But the origin of that might not be color bending. So be careful because if you think it is the limitation of the 8-bit of the per channel, then you might say, okay, there's nothing I can do. Except maybe from differing. Yeah? There's texture compression. 
what this means is if you have a small uncompressed blob like this and you scale it up and you use it for really huge effects like the haze around the sun or an explosion everything will be more or less fine because the graphic card internally interpolates between color values and the only thing what can happen is that you see the limitations of the 8 bit per channel the 256 color per channel limitation okay but when it comes to compressed textures and most engines use compressed texture data then you run into the problem that the compressed texture has less colors for example in dxt1 you have only 16 bit per pixel which means uh, 65 536 colors and also you get some compression artifacts it looks kind of wobbly and if this texture gets scaled up a lot you might think uh, this looks like like color bending at least i was in this in this situation but you have to see that this is the problem of texture compression and that you can do something against it you should click on the link in the article because the guy wrote an article making quality game textures where he really was picky about fixing that problem to fight against the artifacts you could use no compression okay you could use a small texture and then the graphic card would interpolate the values really well the next way <laughs> i don't recommend it okay but it is possible you could just use a really huge but compressed texture then the artifacts are smaller and you might not see it when you scale up the effect for example but still you would get some artifacts and you would get some color shifting which is really interesting because the color shifts happen because the different channels red green and blue are not compressed with the same precision okay the green channel gets six bit while the other ones get only five because the human eye is more sensitive when it comes to green values and therefore some color shifts might happen which is really confusing because you save a gray texture and then you see some color in it and when i saw this first time i was really confused what the heck is happening here so and a really interesting fourth way to uh, deal with this problem is to not use a texture at all we did this in x rebirth our art director alex showed me this trick we used geometry and vertex color and this has the really big advantage that there is no compression so you don't get artifacts the vertex color is interpolated on the graphic card so you get out the highest quality for the gradients of course there's a lot of geometry going on but still it's really interesting and don't forget that the home world backgrounds are done via vertex color too about both the rebirth lens flares and the home world vertex color backgrounds i wrote separate articles so if you're interested in that you should click on on the blog and read the stuff and here's another example for what might look like color bending but is not and has also nothing to do with texture compression this is faceted geometry it's I, I guess some smoothing problems so that's it thanks for listening please let me know uh, how you like this experiment of an overview about the article in video form because i'm not sure if people prefer to read or prefer to watch a video personally i prefer watching videos because it's more relaxing and most of the times faster for me and more visual but having the information in text means you can search them faster and so um, i'm not sure if I'm on the right way. So just let me know. Give me some feedback. And I will see if I uh, continue this in the future. Thanks for listening or reading. And have a nice day.